Let me ask a question. Do any of you ever get offended? <laughs> right over there, two people. <laughs> How many of you get your feelings hurt kind of easy? I knew it'd be all the women. You know. <laughs> There's an occasional man that may be like that, but usually it's ladies because we got lots of emotions. And uh, but you know. You're always going to have opportunities to be offended. I mean, one lady, after hearing me teach, said she counted how many opportunities she had to be offended in a week and had 40 things on her list. You may have an opportunity to be offended before you get out of this building tonight. I mean, that's just the truth. I mean, you know, some wonderful Christian who's been in here and heard us talk about love may almost run you over in the parking lot. And you're going you're gonna to have to choose to believe the best that they didn't see you although you really think they did you're going to believe that they didn't and you're going to keep your peace because your peace is your power did you hear what I said your peace is your power I can't control what everybody out there does and neither can you but God has given us a spirit of discipline and self-control so we can control ourselves with God's help if we really want to. Amen? So I'm going to talk to you this weekend about offense and strife, both of which I believe are just demonic spirits that are sent out from hell to steal the anointing, to steal God's blessings, and to steal our peace. There's so many wonderful scriptures in the Bible about not giving offense, not taking offense, not being offended by the truth, not being offended by trouble. I'm even going to do one teaching on not offending yourself. You say, well, how do I offend myself? Well, just come back and find out. You'll find out. When Dave and I started the ministry the way it is now, I did home Bible studies for five years and worked at another church for five years, but now for 30 years we've had the privilege of birthing and starting up this ministry, and there were three things that God put in my heart when I first started, and I felt that he said very clearly, if you do these things, I'll bless you. And one of them was keep the strife out of your life. And I have found out if I'm going to keep the strife out of my life, I'm going to have to really want to. And I'm going to have to work at it, and I have to be the one that's going to be first to be a peacemaker, even if nobody else is. And um, the more you do it, the easier it gets, because the more you refuse to live with bitterness and resentment and anger and unforgiveness and strife and offense, the more you realize how useless it all is. And how it doesn't solve your problems. It doesn't change the people. I mean, really, staying mad at somebody that hurt you is like taking poison, hoping your enemy will die. It, you, you don't hurt them at all. By doing that, you only hurt yourself. And so, he said, keep the strife out of your life. And I know if I don't tell you the other two, you're going to be right in the office wanting to know what the other two were. So, he said, do everything that you do with excellence and always be a person of integrity. And I believe that those are three very important things. But strife, keeping the strife out of your life, is very, very important. And sometimes in the beginning, it can almost seem like a full-time job. Because if you're not very good at it, if it's an area of weakness for you, the devil's always going to find some way to try to get you stirred up and upset about something. I always like to say the devil sets us up to get us upset. He knows what buttons to push at what time to get us bothered by something. And I don't know if you've figured it out yet or not, but anytime you're getting ready to go hear the word, <laughs> if he can get you rattled in any way so you come in, you know, with your church face, but all stirred up on the inside, 
Because actually the Bible says in James, and this is a powerful scripture, that the seed of the word must be sown in a heart of peace by someone who works for and makes peace in order for it to bear good fruit. So that means I've got to get here in peace and you need to get here in peace. Otherwise, things that we say, and you know, the word is so, I mean, it's not just like going to church or I'm going to go see what Joyce looks like in real life. I mean, the word of God, <laughs> God's word amazes me. Please love the Word. Love the Word of God. And so we have worked really hard over the years to keep the strife out of our life and to try to walk in peace. And I'll be honest with you, I could not be mad at my husband and get up here and preach. I don't care how much crow I had to eat. We would have to come to terms of peace before I stood up here. I just absolutely cannot do it because if there's anything I can't stand, it's phoniness. Yeah. Amen. And I remember enough years of my life going to church, me and Dave mad at each other, fought all the way there and probably would fight all the way home. But when we got in the building, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And I'll tell you what, I know that that stuff just, <sighs> I'm sure God's just like, really people? <laughs> so, Tonight, we're going to talk about not taking offense. I can't guarantee you that somebody won't try to give you some. <laughs> but it's up to us whether we want to take it or not. Amen? So, what is an offense? The word offense in the Greek is the word scandalon. Very interesting word. It actually describes the name of a part, just a little part on a trap that held the bait that lured an animal into that trap. You know, uh, an animal is not going to go in a trap without some kind of bait. <laughs> you got to make it look good or smell good or something. You know, Satan in the Garden of Eden, he baited Eve. And he baited her with, there's something that God knows that you don't know. And are you sure that he told you that you couldn't eat of every tree of the garden? Making it sound like God was withholding something from her. And so she got her mind working. And I tell you what, when you think too much in the top of your head and don't use enough discernment, you're on your way out before you ever get in. Because if you think that Satan does not work day and night to try to deceive you, he does. He absolutely does. But you know what? We're smarter than he is because we've got the mind of Christ and we know the truth of God's word. Amen? And you know how offense is? You may be all right if you're not seeing the person that offended you, but boy, you run into them somewhere and it's like, oh. I don't even know what I'm talking about. You know, I don't play these stupid games anymore, but when I used to get mad at Dave, I wouldn't go in the room where he was at. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be, be with you. Well, Dave didn't care. He'd sit and watch television and have a good time, but I thought I was really getting him back, you know, by putting up my walls and not, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you. He probably thought, good, get some quiet for a change. So it's interesting to
my heart No, you can't be fair, you just don't know what I mean This time the monkey green Come on and peer the vent now Come on and move it, dance on down We're gonna dance all of the Cause we're gonna party till The party and the party bumps Dance with me, baby And jump into my car and drive in the I can feel the falling rain on my face I'm losing And I hope to you that an offense in the Greek is actually bait for a trap. So keep in mind when somebody offends you, it may not even be, I guess we need to ask the question, are they offending me or am I getting offended? Because we just have, do any of you just have touchy days? Come on, all the women got their hands up again. <laughs> Some got both hands up, you know. <clears throat> you know how it is? I mean, something can happen one time. A person can do something one time or say something one time, <clears throat> doesn't bother you at all. But boy, if it's a bad hormone day, <laughs> they can say the same thing. And man, now you are upset. You are tired of it. You're not putting up with it anymore and you are cutting them out of your life, period. <laughs> End of the conversation. So let, let's just say this. It's not going to do any good to go on with this teaching if you're not going to be willing to say, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for being offended. I, I'm no longer going to put that responsibility on everybody else to not offend me. 
Don't make me come down there. <laughs> Do you know how much we deflect our problems onto other people? Well, you, well, you, well, you. And if you didn't, and if you did, then I'd be happy. And if you didn't upset me, then I wouldn't feel this way. But God gives us self-control. <laughs> If you don't understand that, that means the ability to control yourself. <laughs> There's no gift called others control. <laughs> I can't control what others do all the time, but I do have a spirit of self-control. So we have to take responsibility for our stuff. We will never, ever be free from any problem as long as we're blaming somebody else for it. Got that? We'll never be free from any problem as long as we're blaming somebody. And you're like, bah! I know, I know. I'm not saying they didn't do anything wrong. I'm just trying to teach you how you can be free no matter what they do. Come on, trying to teach you how you can be free no matter what they do. Because when it all comes down to it, if you don't care enough about yourself to run your life in such a way that you can enjoy it, probably nobody else is going to either. It's time to stand up for yourself and say, I'm not going to live in bondage anymore. And that doesn't mean that you're going to keep every, you're going to have everything out there be the way you want it to be. It means that you're going to take responsibility to not buy into that nonsense because it's all the, the devil anyway. And if nothing else works, by the time you get as old as me, you just won't have any time to be angry anymore. I don't have any days left to waste, so. John Bevere wrote a great book on strife called The Bait of Satan. And uh, so it, it's the bait that the enemy uses. And he will use things that will get your mind churning or get your emotions stirred up. Satan uses bait to lure us into a lifetime of bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, strife, hatred, and Revenge. So it starts out as a hangnail, but you know, a hangnail, if you don't take care of it properly, even a paper cut, if you don't take care of it properly, I mean, that thing can begin to fester and it can get infected and it can cause you big, 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 big problems. Let me tell you something. It's so much better to take care of a problem when it's little. And, and it's also good to take care of it as quickly as possible before it has any opportunity to take roots. Amen? I've learned the quicker I forgive somebody, the easier it's going to be. The sooner I decide to believe the best, the easier it's going to be. And I've come to the point, I don't even, even if you did mean it, I don't care. I'm going to believe the best because I'm not going to waste my day. You're, you're, we're getting a breakthrough. I can tell. Okay. Who wants to hear a Dave story? I have a brand new Dave story. This is hot off the press. I don't know that I could preach if I wasn't married to Dave. He continually provides me with sermon material. You should hear me at home. He'll do something. I'll say, yep, that'll preach. Yep, that'll preach. Okay, so Dave and I, this January, were married 49 years. 49 years. Now, Dave is a wonderful man, but he's not a gift buyer. Which could be a problem because one of my love languages is gifts. The other one is acts of service. So he is good at that. He, he you know, Dave's just like, he'll take trash out. I mean, I think if I wanted something from the store at 10 o'clock at night, he'd get dressed and go get it if I asked him to. So, you know, this is not a let's put Dave down night because he is a wonderful, wonderful man. But 
You know how we are. Sometimes we focus too much on what somebody's not. And we totally forget about everything they are because we get used to that stuff. We begin to take what people do for granted. Come on now. And then that just becomes, well, yeah, well, I expect you to do that. Well, I mean, I expect you to do the dishes. I expect you to take the trash out. I expect you, I expect you, I expect you. You've always done that, but what about this? And so, for some reason this year, well, Dave was in Florida. I was in St. Louis, and I was going to go to Florida, but we couldn't be together on our anniversary. So people were saying things to me like, um, well, I bet Dave will have something special planned when you get there. <laughs> and I'm thinking, mm, eh, probably not. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, so now, now let me just say I don't know why this 49 year bothered me because he didn't do anything on 45 or 46 or, or 47 or 48 I mean it's, it's not even 50 yet I could have waited and got mad at 50 but no so in my I got this expectation. <laughs> and you know, now I just want to say this for good measure and be sure you get this. Sometimes it's not even people that are disappointing us and offending us. It's our expectation.